I'm Carol Turek and I am photographing every hummingbird species. Come with me as I explore Central and South America to find all 360 plus species. Some of them are critically endangered and difficult to find, but we will find them all. This is Carol from Hummingbird Spot. This is so exciting. I'm here in Miami with William Oriana, and he's taking this so you can't see him unless he turns it around. Go ahead, do a selfie, William. Hello. <laughs> and we're getting ready to leave this Admiral's Club and go to our gate for our trip to Sao Paulo. We'll see you next time. We'll be in Brazil later. As you can see, the airport is empty because we were hassled at immigration about having health insurance coverage that covers us here in Brazil. William and I both came armed with a stack of papers showing it, but somehow they just didn't get it. So we had to stay there about 45 minutes trying to explain that we would be covered with health insurance if something happened here in Brazil. It's all a new COVID thing. And speaking of COVID, I'm putting my mask back on. <laughs> Welcome to Brazil. I'm really, I'm really happy you're here. I'm really happy too. I'm happy to be back. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hi, this is Jarvis, our excellent hunter of hummingbirds. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is Gustavo, Gustavo, my partner, our drive. Okay. And uh, he's a birder too, and a guide too. Excellent. He specializes in owls, but he loves hummingbirds too. Oh, I love owls too. Oh, you, you, you <laughs> have the right man here. He knows uh -huh. everything about owls, uh -huh. and I love it. It's going to show us every beautiful hummingbird on our itinerary, right? A lot of endemics and some special from South America, and I love it. Okay, let's go find them. Oh, let's go find them. <laughs> We're taking a long, winding drive that's going to end up at the first place we're going to stay, the Paraiso Eco Lodge. Uh, from what I see, pictures on the internet, this place looks great. I can't wait to get there, and there's supposed to be lots of hummingbirds here, so we'll see. We were looking for a violet crown plover crest, but one just didn't show up. I was told though that we were going to a different place the next day where we were sure to see one. We just filmed our very first Brazilian hummingbird, the violet capital nymph. He perched right here outside the window for us. This is so exciting. I think I got some really good pictures and William got video. William Moriana always gets my birds. The violet-capped wood nymph is a striking bird with its metallic green plumage and violet crown, and sometimes the crown shines blue. It has a long forked blue tail. The females have shorter tails and they're gray underneath, and they have a green crown. This bird's range is from southeast Brazil down through Paraguay and northern Argentina. for our first night in Brazil. 
Brazil at the Paraíso Eco Lodge. The food here is just fantastic. I feel like I'm in a fancy four-star restaurant in Los Angeles. This is just great. Uh, we're going to go and seek out more hummingbirds tomorrow. We did get one new one today, number 151. And tomorrow we're going to be going very close by. Um, what is the name of the park right here? Intervallas State Park. Intervallas State Park. And we're going to look for some more hummingbirds for you and me. Good morning, Carol here from Hummingbird Spot. It's our second day in Brazil, and we have a wonderful breakfast laid out for us, and uh, we're ready to go just a few miles away to find some more hummingbirds. See you later. The gang, Betchin, is leading us, and he thinks he found the bird we're going after, the violet crown clover crest. Let's see. waiting for it to come back. I have my camera settings all ready to get a try to get a flying shot on that flower. Let's see if we can do it. I refer to this bird as the violet crown plover crest and that's what they call it there. But once I got home I found out that the International Ornithological Congress and eBird call this bird the purple crown plover crest. And that's what I'm going to refer to it as from now on. But the main thing is we got the bird. We spent most of the morning photographing and getting video of this adorable bird. He's the cutest little hummingbird. He looks like a Disney character. They're found in Southeast Brazil, Paraguay, and a small Northeastern part of Argentina. I love this bird, and William Oriana got beautiful video. Enjoy this. Scale-throated hermit was another thing altogether. This bird darted in and out of this tiny patch of flowers so quickly. I was lucky to get one shot that you can identify as the scale-throated hermit, and I was happy to get that. Hopefully, I'll run into this bird again and get something better. But for now, this is my scale-throated hermit. It's been a productive morning with Bettino, Gustavo and Jarvis, and William Moriana behind the camera as usual. We saw a violet crown plover crest and we got great pictures and video and also a scale-throated hermit. We came back to the lodge around 1 p.m. for a wonderful lunch. We were the only guests there as tourists were not really pouring into Brazil yet because of the pandemic. Here's William putting on his leg protectors. What is this protecting us from? Snakes? Yes. Creepy crawlies? <laughs> Some of us come prepared with rubber boots like this that we don't have to wear those silly things. <laughs> After lunch, we went out on a hike to try to find more hummingbirds on the property. Oh, 
but you cannot summon birds to perform for you and we did not see any. But we ended this day with two wonderful new species. The next morning, we went to Bacino Rodriguez's home because he had informed Jarvis the day before that he saw a white-throated hummingbird on his property. Well, we had looked for one the day before and we briefly spotted one, but we didn't get any pictures or video of it. So going to Bacino sounded like a sure thing. So that's where we went to look for this hummingbird. We all went up to the place where Bicino had seen him perching, and there he was. So William took video while I was photographing, and we saw the adorable white-throated hummingbird. The white-throated hummingbird has a pretty widespread territory. It's found in southeast Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and down into Argentina. The males and females look very similar. They're green, they have a white throat, and a white belly. After we finished with the white-throated hummingbird, we drove to Intervalle State Park. Bacino knew of a lek for the dusky-throated hermit. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Hermits can be really difficult to photograph, but if you know where there's a lek, that really increases your chances of getting some good photos. We found out where there's a lek of the dusky-throated hermit. This is a rare endemic hermit only found in a tiny area in Brazil right here. So we're gonna get some great video and some great pictures, we hope. Come on inside. Bacino led the way and it wasn't long before we saw our first dusky-throated hermit. The dusky-throated hermit is endemic to a rather small area in southeastern Brazil. It has a curved beak, it has a really dark eye mask, and a rather light throat. We saw several of these birds in the area and they performed for us. So we got some great pictures and wonderful video. If you look at this video closely, you'll see little mites running around on this bird's beak. Now these are flower mites and flower mites use hummingbirds as their airlines. When a hummingbird puts its beak into a flower where they are, they're finished with that flower, so they'll hop onto the bird's beak and wait for the bird to go to another flower it likes, and then they'll drop off into their new home. After filming the dusky-throated hermit, we said goodbye to Bicino and went back to the Paraiso Eco Lodge for lunch. Then we drove out to Brejão Tristapia. I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, which is basically a swamp to look for another hummingbird. We parked next to a huge area that had been cleared for sugarcane. Apparently what I heard is that more of this land, like all the way out to the swamp, was going to be cleared, but they were stopped, thank goodness, because this is a habitat for lots and lots of birds. Well, we went on a short hike through the trees and ended up in this swamp that was filled with reeds. I think I laughed when they told me that this was where we were going to find the white-tailed golden throat hummingbird. I would have never believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. This is hummingbird territory? Wow. The white-tailed golden throat has an unusual face. It has a black mask and it also has a white line both above and below the mask. I was really surprised to see a bird in this kind of environment, but I mean, I wouldn't have believed that a hummingbird was going to show up, but he sure did. This bird is pretty widespread in South America. It's found all along the northern coast. It's found throughout Brazil. There's been a spotting in Chile and in Argentina, uh, lots of different places. So I will probably run into this bird again. Hope I don't have to tramp through a swamp to find him again. <laughs> 
We got in the car and made the long drive to Manchelegre du Sul, which is a little municipality. Um, I think the population is only about 7,500 people. Adorable little colonial town with one road going in and one road coming out. We met at the Kaufman Cafe, which is a fabulous restaurant, to have dinner. And that is where we met our host for the next couple days, Luis Gonzaga Truzzi. We got a good night's sleep and the next morning we got up and we were ready to look for hummingbirds. We are at the home of Luis Gonzaga Truzzi, also known as Zaga. Uh, and he's invited us here to his home on the farm. He has six or seven new species that come to his garden. And we haven't seen these guys before. So I am so excited. Let's go get these guys. We were on our way down to Zaga's neighbor's house because she has a lot of feeders on her property also. And on the pathway to walk down to her property, we stopped because there was a somber hummingbird sitting up in the tree. And I wanted to get some photographs of that one because that was a new species for me. The somber hummingbird is very well named because it's pretty dark and drab. And I love any hummingbird that'll spread its tail for me when I have my camera aimed at it. But what makes it really easy to spot is the white dot behind its eye. We staked out the feeders at Zaga's neighbors for a while, and she did have a lot of hummingbirds too, pretty much the same ones that we found at Zaga's. But she did have more stripe-breasted starthroats there, and that was one of our targets. Unfortunately, the only really good perch that they seemed to like was up on an electrical wire, which is not the best perch for beautiful photographs, but you take what you get. The stripe-breasted starthroat is a Brazil endemic, so this one was an absolute must-get. They were here, but we saw mostly juveniles, but a female did make an appearance, as did one beautiful full-plumaged male. This one I caught in flight was hanging around one of Zaga's feeders. Zaga's house is magnificent. A lot of people go there to see his hummingbirds because he has tons of feeders around and a lot of beautiful flowers that the hummingbirds love. All in all, we saw 15 species of hummingbird at Zaga's. I'm showing you six of them today because these are new species that I got really good pictures of. Some of them that we saw here, I got better pictures of a little later in the trip and I'll show them to you then. Some of them were birds that we have seen before, like the black-throated mango and a couple of the hermits, but we also saw the amethyst wood star. I saw this bird previously in Peru, but I got some what I think really nice pictures of this bird, so I'm showing these to you right now. The Planalto Hermit is a really pretty hermit. It has a green back and a cinnamon color rump and belly. And this one's a regular visitor at Zaga's feeders and the flowers he's planted here. And it is always a thrill to get a photograph of a hermit feeding it a flower. This hermit's found mainly in Brazil, but also in Paraguay, Bolivia, and Northern Chile. The black Jacobin is found mainly in Brazil and neighboring countries to the south. It's a regular here at Zaga's feeders. The bird is mostly black with white on its sides and a black and white tail. The juveniles are unmistakable because they have these reddish brown bands on the side of their heads. The swallow-tailed hummingbird is a large, beautiful bird. It's got this gorgeous blue head and a green belly and a green back and a long and deeply forked blue tail. The birds found, again, mostly in Brazil and the neighboring countries to the south, but there are also a few sightings in Bolivia and a few as far away as Peru. The glittering bellied emerald is pretty common in Brazil, Bolivia, and halfway down through Argentina. The bird's so colorful that it's hard to miss sitting on a branch. It's a beautiful green and blue, and it has a red beak with a black tip. The bird commonly comes to feeders, which is great. It makes it a little bit easier to photograph. I got one quick shot of a female. She's rather plain with this dark eye mask.
We put William Oriana's videos of all six of these birds together in a little sequence for you. Enjoy this, it's beautiful footage. We had a fantastic time at Pusada de Fazenda. Zaga made sure we ate really well. The food in Brazil is phenomenal. I would come here just for the food, but the hummingbirds, even better. We're saying goodbye to Pusada de Fazenda and uh, Zaga was such a great host. He gave both William and I coffee from his own farm and also a bottle of cachaça. This is used to make a cocktail called Camparinha. Caipirinha. Caipirinha. Yeah. I've said it 50 times already. I still haven't gotten it right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It was a great pleasure for me to receive you, Garbas, Gustavo, and William. It was a great pleasure. This is a fantastic place. You want to see hummingbirds in Brazil? Come here. We saw 15 new species for me, and he usually sees even more than that on this property. So it's wonderful. And we got him to wear a hummingbird uh, spot yeah, logo. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I brought Fillmore out to introduce this one because she's particularly talkative today, and you might hear little noises in the background. We left Pusada da Fazenda and then took another long drive out to Campos do Jardin uh, because this is the area where we would find the green crowned plover crest. We stayed at a local hotel for the night and Jarvis Matus was so excited because we could get pizza for dinner. Jarvis, you need to come to the U.S. There's a pizza place on every corner here. <laughs> The next morning, we were off to meet with Chiago Carniero, and he was going to be our guide to take us to the Green Crown Plover Crest. He knew a couple places where they hang out, including a lek, so uh, we wanted to get some beautiful pictures of this bird. We're here with our local guide, Chiago, who brought us to the lek of the Green Plover Crest, which is an endemic. We're looking for him. Wish us luck. Oh We found the bird in this area. We got some pictures, but the bird also liked to feed on some flowers and the light wasn't just perfect here yet. So we went to a different area to film the bird thinking when the sun came over, we would come back here later. I want to show you this beautiful overlook. We're parked up here and we're walking around the area looking for the green crowned plover crest. This bird is an adorable little creature. <laughs> it looks very similar to the purple crown plover crest, except of course it's got green on its head instead of violet. We went back to the area where we were filming this morning to try to get more pictures and video of the plover crest feeding on those little pink flowers. 
As you can see, this bird has a shorter bill than many hummingbirds because its food supply consists of smaller flowers, so it doesn't need to get into those deeper tubular flowers. Here we are in the Atlantic rainforest at Jonas's place, and there's supposed to be some fantastic hummingbirds here for us. Let's take a look. This is Jonas D'Ambranzo, and we're in Ubatuba near the Atlantic coast. Jonas has been feeding hummingbirds here for many years, and every hummer in the area seems to know this place. This is a paradise for hummingbirds. I mean, look at this. Everywhere you look at multiple feeders, flowers. I mean, his whole property is filled with hummingbirds. Jonas told us that he had seen a reddish hermit feeding at flowers at the back of his property. Well, I've been told before that there were reddish hermits around and I've never actually seen one. So if there was one here, I really wanted to see it. We took a little hike to the back of his property looking for the bird. We did not see it, so we went to the feeders to start photographing some of the other birds, and then Gustavo Pinto said he saw the reddish hermit on the side of the house. The reddish hermit is one of the smallest hermits, and it has a huge range. It's all over the Amazon basin. It's up in Venezuela, the Guianas, Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, it, all over Brazil. Darned if I could ever find one before though. I was really happy when this little guy did show up. We couldn't see where he was perching because he would take off and go way high and far away. So I'm very happy with the few fleeting flying shots I got. And of course, William Oriana got video. What Jarvis had found for me was a good perch spot where I could get good photographs of the glittering throated emerald. Now the glittering throated emerald is pretty widespread throughout the Amazon basin all along the northern coast of South America into Colombia, Ecuador, down to Bolivia. I mean, it's, it's all over uh, the upper portion of South America. But this bird is really beautiful, metallic green, a little bit of blue in the throat sometimes. It's got a white belly, but the bird is just magnificent when the sun hits it just right. Here's William. Hello. <laughs> he looks like he's got something in his scope. What are you filming? Do you see something? Oh yes, I have a beautiful testing for pets. Excellent. Oh God, that's such a beautiful bird. Be prepared to see beautiful video of the festive coquette. My goodness, the festive coquette is striking. They're tiny, but the males are magnificent with this ruff of green feathers with little white dots at the end of them. The festive coquette female is on the rather plain side. She's cute, but she's plain. But the male with those feathers, <laughs> wow, what a bird. We spent a lot of time stalking this one out at Jonas's feeders. Now the festive coquette is not a new species for me. I did film the festive coquette before uh, and as you can see 
from the video that we did showing these birds fighting that there's two populations. The one I got in Peru and the one that we photographed here look a bit different. And there is some movement to try to get these species separated. So eventually I may be able to count this as another species. But for right now, it is considered the same species as the one that I filmed uh, in the headwaters of the Amazon in Peru at the Hummingbird Lodge. Our Brazilian hummingbird photography adventure continues with day two at Jonas's place. Now he lives near the coast in Ubatuba, Brazil. And this, as I told you in the last video, is a paradise for hummingbirds. We're here in the Atlantic rainforest and we're at the home of Jonas D'Ambranzo. And he has set up an unbelievable hummingbird garden, not only for hummingbirds, but for all kinds of birds. He has like banana feeders for tanagers and other birds, but the hummingbird setup is perfect. He has all of these hummingbirds here at one time or another, but he has several resident species. And uh, we're gonna see if we can film and video everyone that's here. Let's go. We started setting up to film some hummingbirds, and the first one we were going to try for was the saw-billed hermit, because Jonas has a lot of these birds on his property, and this is a very, very interesting bird. Oh my God, I need that bird. I see him. Oh my God, Jarvis, thank you. <laughs> The saw-billed hermit is endemic to Brazil, and it's only found along the Atlantic coast from the state of Espirito Santo down to the state of Santa Catarina. The throat is a beautiful light orange, and it's got a pinstripe breast. Now, if you look at the lower mandible, it's mostly yellow with just a little bit of black at the end. The male's beak and the female's beak are different. The male has a hook at the end of the upper beak. The female's beak is shorter and curved. We could not find a female. There were plenty of males. I don't know where all the gals went, but after two days of filming, I didn't see a female, sorry. There's a lot of research going on about how a lot of male hummingbirds use their beaks as weapons. Now, the saw-billed hermit is one of these birds, and if you get a picture just right with its mouth open, you can actually see little protrusions along the underside that look like little teeth, and they use this to bite and pull the feathers of male rivals. The Brazilian ruby is the other Brazil endemic we got to see here. This is only found on the eastern coast of Brazil. The males have green bellies and upper back, and they have a rust-colored rump and wings. The females are mostly green on top, and they're this peachy brown color underneath. And the females also have a larger teardrop-shaped white spot behind their eyes. Versicolored emeralds rather common and it can be found through much of South America from Colombia over to Venezuela, Guyana, and throughout much of Brazil and Paraguay. It is a gorgeous bird with a glowing green body and some white in its belly and it has an orange lower mandible. 
There are a couple of subspecies with some of them having more white in the throat and others more greenish. Ours um, were found at the coast and the coastal ones tend to have a little more white in the throat. We did see this bird at Posada do Fazenda, but we didn't get really good pictures of it. I didn't photograph it well until here, so this is where I'm counting it. We did see an old friend here, the white chin sapphire. I had filmed this bird previously in Peru, but he was here and he was really beautiful, so I couldn't resist getting a picture. We got up early and headed to the Sao Paulo airport so we could make our hour and a half flight to Vitoria in the state of Espirito Santo. We were headed to find more beautiful hummingbirds in the Atlantic rainforest, and there were a couple of Brazilian endemics that we were gonna to try to photograph. Vittorio is a beautiful city on the Atlantic Ocean and we got a great view of it coming in on the plane. We landed and got our car and we were off up the coast to the marine biology station Augusto Rushi. But first, we had to make a quick stop. We're in Victoria, and uh, we're on our way to a place where we're going to find two new species of hummingbirds. But um, Carol forgot to bring sunscreen, and it's very sunny here, so Jarvis has gone into the store to get me some. The biological station Augusto Rushi is in the municipality of Aracruz, and it's here that we were hoping to find two new hummingbird species for me. I wanted to introduce Gabriel. He owns this property and he was kind enough to allow us to come here to see his hummingbirds today. You see some construction going on in the background. He's creating a museum in honor of his grandfather, Augusto Rushi, um, who was a naturalist, biologist, and uh, his father, Andreas Rushi, also was. Um, that's just a wonderful thing, and when you're all finished, I want to come back and see it. Eu Say. espero vocês. Olá, pessoal. We set up shop in front of a row of hummingbird feeders that Gabrielle had set up. It looks like these hummingbird feeders were made out of Coke bottles. I'm glad to see them recycling all these plastic bottles into something useful like hummingbird feeders. We observed a lot of birds coming to the feeders and we were really looking for where they were perching because we wanted to get some good photographs of these birds perching. Thank goodness that Jarvis was pointing out the blue chin sapphire to me because that bird blended so well into its environment that I, I couldn't even see them at first. What a bird. When the sun hits it, it's like neon. This bird is pretty widespread throughout South America. I'm actually surprised that I haven't run into it before, but I was really glad that he was coming here. The minute hermit was our main target here, as this is the Brazil endemic, and it's only found in a rather small area of the Brazilian coastline. Here at the biological station is one of the best places to spot it as it regularly comes to these feeders. Finding a perch spot was a little trickier because they would drink and then they would dart off deep into the forest. But we did get lucky when one decided to stop and let us take pictures. We came here to find the blue chin sapphire and the minute hermit, but uh, Jarvis Mattis, who is our excellent guide here in Brazil, he also found us a rufous-breasted hermit. So we got a bonus today. The rufous-breasted hermit is a large hermit, and it's also pretty widespread from Panama down throughout a lot of South America, and also some of the islands like Trinidad and Tobago off the northern coast, Grenada, uh, another one that I kept missing on my previous trips. It normally feeds from heliconia flowers, but they will come to feeders, and fortunately it did come to these. We are here at Vita Verde in Santa Teresa in the state of Espiritu Santo in Brazil. 
and this place is magnificent. There are lots and lots of hummingbirds. The main one that we're looking for today is the frilled coquette. This is one of the most beautiful hummingbirds in the world, and we're going to get video and pictures of it. I guarantee it. Let's go. The grounds at Vita Verde are amazing. Ruben and Desiree, the owners of Vita Verde, have landscaped the property to perfection with flowers and trees and bushes. It's just fantastic for attracting hummingbirds. There's a natural lagoon as well as an in-ground swimming pool. But the hummingbirds, you know, I think they even have more than I do. This is Ruben and Desihe. They live here. This is their hummingbird paradise. It's a huge property with hummingbird friendly flowers everywhere, tons of feeders, different species of hummingbirds. This, they've been feeding hummingbirds for 38 years, so they even have me beat. But uh, if you are ever in Santa Teresa in Brazil, you have got to come here because you're not going to believe your eyes. many birds here that we've seen earlier in Brazil, like lots of black jacobins, versicolor emeralds, the swallowtailed and somber hummingbirds were here, and all of these birds just mob these feeders. But our main target was the frilled coquette. There were plenty of them around, but in order to see the brilliant green feathers in the male's gorget, the light has to be just right. So we spent a lot of time looking for the right bird on the right branch facing the right direction to capture those colors. This bird is endemic to Brazil and it is magnificent. The females, again, are plainer than the males, but they do have a splash of that orange on their face. The rest of the face and back is green with that typical coquette, wide, light-colored band on the rump. So they're really easy to identify when they're flying around. There was one juvenile that I thought was so cute. He was just starting to grow his adult feather, so we only had a couple of the feathers in his gorget and two of the orange feathers sticking out of the top of his head. He was so cute. The white vented violet ear is the other bird we found here that was a new species for me. This one is found in Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia, and in northern Chile. It's very colorful with shades of green and blue and aqua with the little purple and pink ears he sticks out when he's excited or upset, just like the other violet ears. If you watched my tip videos on attracting hummingbirds, you already know the formula, and that formula is followed to the T here at Vita Verde. Here at Vita Verde, again, the recipe's being followed. They've been feeding hummingbirds here for years and years and years. And we've got feeders in a straight line, other feeders creating multiple territories, hummingbird-friendly flowers everywhere. And there are perches set up near the feeders for the hummingbirds to perch and watch the feeders they like. And it's a simple recipe. It takes a while to build something like this, but everyone can do it. I was sad to say goodbye to Pusada Vita Verde because it is truly a wonderful place. But we had to leave at 1.30 in the morning to make sure that we had plenty of time to get back to the airport in case there was an accident or something. <laughs> so we could fly to Sao Paulo and then up to Sierra to see our next hummingbird. 
We took the long drive out to Putengi, where we would stay at Sitio Pau Preto for the next couple of nights. We were greeted by Yvette and by Bob Jefferson, our hosts, for the next couple of days. I'm here at Sitio Pau Preto with Bob Jefferson and Yvette. They run this place. Um, beautiful little lodge. It's simple, but you have everything you need here, and it's in a marvelous location here in northeast Brazil. We started looking around to see what was in the area, and there were some old friend hummingbirds. We saw the swallowtailed hummingbird, and the glittering-bellied emerald was here also. The glittering-bellied emerald fed off of cactus flowers here, and we caught one and William Oriana got really good video of this, of one of these birds bathing in the sprinklers. We got up in the morning after a welcomed rest. We drove out into the Kachinga. Now the Kachinga is a dry forest. It apparently during the rainy season gets nice and green, but the rest of the year, it's all with wooded thorny plants, not a whole lot of green, desert grasses, a lot of succulents. It's sort of like a zir escape. The name Kachinga means white land, and that's pretty much what it looks like. We're here in the Kachinga forest of northeastern Brazil, which as you can see is a dry forest. We're here for one reason, to look for the broad-tipped hermit. This is a hermit that isn't very easily seen. It's a pretty rare one, and a lot of people have come to this area and not been able to see it but it seems to like this patch of ground. We came here to see this one guy. We were spending, we were planning on spending all day here today and even some of tomorrow morning. Bob Jefferson seemed to think he knew where to find one and boy was he right. <laughs> we went looking for this bird and it wasn't long before we found this little guy who liked to perch on a branch almost right in front of us and he would fly off to feed, then he would come back to this same branch. And while he was on this branch, he performed for us. He would stick out his tongue, preen, scratch, spread his tail, look up and open his mouth. And it was just wonderful photographing this little guy. And this bird turned out to be my favorite bird of the whole trip. Who would have thought it would end up being a hermit? Because <laughs> I always complain about how hard they are to photograph. But this guy really changed my tune on that one. Yvette is... Bob's mother, and she cooked all the meals for us, which were really wonderful. So we were well fed for these couple days. My compliments to the chef. The next day, we got up and went on a little trip to find another very, very interesting bird. Its breeding ground is about one square kilometer, and that breeding ground just happens to be in the middle of a park. Now, this isn't a hummingbird, but sometimes a bird is so special that I really want to see it. I think hanging around with all these general birders is starting to rub off on me. This is the extremely critically endangered Araripe mannequin. This is one of the rarest birds in the world. At one time, they thought the Araripe mannequin's numbers was down to 50 individual birds, and that's it. But due to strict conservation in the area now, the numbers are increasing. What a beautiful little bird. Fortunately, we got a couple really good pictures and wonderful video for you. 
our Brazilian adventure is coming to a close. Pretty soon we're gonna leave for the airport and I'm gonna be flying back to Los Angeles. I'm here with Jarvis and with Gustavo. These are local guides in Brazil that have taken us all throughout parts of the country to find these wonderful hummingbirds. I will be back to Brazil because there's lots more birds here. This was a very, very exciting trip. And pretty soon I'll be back in Los Angeles making sure those feeders are filled for you again. Well, girl, thank you so much for trusting our stuff here in Brazil. Uh, but you know, you won't leave Brazil without a, a gift from us. This is the Honeybirds of Brazil. It's a beautiful photo, uh, a book. I hope you, you like it. Oh my uh, goodness. It's from me and Gustavo to you. Thank uh, you. I would like also thanks William to trust our service too. And uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much.